Okay, I should be I should be back. Test, test, I think I am back. Uh, I have a little bit of an issue with this other camera. You guys are gonna enjoy seeing this for a second. Uh, let me see, I think if I press this button, it should go away. There we go. So I'm really having some serious technical problems which I thought I had resolved, but I clearly need to um, do some work before next week, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if this crashes again now. So unfortunately, when it crashes, it seems to <laughs> crash, crashing begets crashing. So what I was trying to do, and now I realized, thank you to me, I am so me in the Slack group, is that um, I don't think um, uh, that you can actually see the matrix implementation in with the HTML. So I think what I might actually do for the purpose of this video, for explanation purposes, so let me open up processing. Because processing works exactly the same way. So the main, the main thing that I want to do is I want to discuss why it's called push and pop and the concept of a stack and a queue, sort of. But I also want to talk about why it's called a matrix. So let me get something Let me get something going in processing just really quickly to see if this will do what I want it to do. Uh, and what I want to say is no loop. And I want to say print matrix. And I want to say translate 100 comma zero. And I want to say print matrix again. And someone remind me, what's, the, what's a nice, succinct way of explaining why for two dimensions you need three numbers? That's weird. Why did it? And three dimensions, you need four numbers. So this is the default. There should be two rows of this. That doesn't seem right. Uh, print matrix processing.org. Um, let me see. Print matrix. By the way, I don't know if anyone just joined by accident. <laughs> I apologize. I had a live stream going for like almost two hours that uh, froze and crashed. So I just like jumping right here in the middle. Because this should do, right? Uh, let me, if I change this to P2D, it will give me what I'm expecting. That's weird. That doesn't seem right to me. I should get this. Uh, so. Right. I, I, okay, so maybe I have to give up on this whole print matrix thing. I don't know why this isn't working now to give me an actual proper printout of what the, because it's, I've done this before in teaching where I, you kind of look at the default So uh, when this seems to happen, um, what seems to help is I have to re, so this shouldn't, I, I have to, I'm, I will not be streaming next week without different software or some major change because I, I thought it was a fluke last week, but clearly that's not the case. Um, and hopefully you can see me now and hear me. I'm going to just check here. Uh, yeah, can, I don't see myself in my preview, but is it, is it working now? <laughs> uh, hello? Yes, okay. Um, 
So uh, what seems to be going on is, I've, right now I'm trying to stream in 720p with some like idea that that might help instead of 1080p. And what seems to happen is that um, I want to use Open Broadcast Studio and I wasn't able to get that to work, but I think I'm going to have to just allocate some time in the next week to trying to use that instead or maybe wiping the computer and reinstalling and resetting the setup up. But uh, if, you, if you're bear with me for a second, I'm going to configure. <laughs> this is just the raw view now of the green screen. I'm going to, um, because I want to just come back as soon as I can, I'm going to add uh, the laptop uh, and move that down. And um, I'm going to add chroma keying and then myself a little bit and go over here to the corner and uh, so I think you should see me now in my usual I think I might be smaller um, I think I might be smaller <laughs> yeah <laughs> surgery on the elbow might have called all, caused all this uh, all right I'm sorry I'm getting a little I'm sad that this is happening uh, all right let me try to make this bigger Uh, all right, so I am back up and running. I kind of feel like when I, oh, I'm not recording to disk. I wonder if I can get away without recording to disk. I'm going to record to disk, though. I don't think that's the problem. Uh, and I'm going to... That's weird. All right, I'm recording to disk now also. All right, so apologies for that. I just re... I'm so, like, I have to do this so often now, I've gotten pretty good at it. I just, like, rebuilt the entire, like, Wirecast configuration <laughs> really quickly. Um, maybe matrices, maybe just only, a, maybe it's matrices which are the problem. Because, you know, when you do machine learning, you've got to work with matrices. Now I'm trying to do transformations and work with matrices. I even get to custom shapes, the clock coding challenge. It's almost 6 o'clock. Uh, Max might be the problem. Okay, so let me see if I can keep going here. I'm going to give up on um, what I was going to attempt to show you because maybe, um, let me just try this real quick. Yeah, I don't know why this is not, this print matrix function that I used to use doesn't work. I'm going to give up on showing that to you and I'm just going to explain that, uh, the um, values for describing how <laughs> things are in a matrix. Okay. One, zero, 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 one, zero. Okay. Um, well, look at this. Anybody wants to do something for P5, you could contribute uh, an example. This, this web page, there are very few pieces of reference that don't have examples left to contribute, and there's some information on the P5 wiki. Here's one. And maybe implementing print matrix, was, I don't know. So, so I would love to look into that because I don't know that you need it so much, but it is quite, um, let's look at apply matrix real quick. Um, it's useful for teaching, so I could come back. If we could get that implemented in P5, that would be an interesting thing to try to do. Uh, apply, there we go. Yeah, so this also, um, this also is not really, uh, uh, there's no example. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fumble my way through this. Uh, I'm going to quit processing, and this will be just one more follow-up video about transformations, which is really just going to make use of the whiteboard because I don't know what else to say. Oh, I didn't make the whiteboard shot. Give me a second here. <laughs> so i got to make the whiteboard shot. Capture devices, three. Oh, that's the laptop. Capture devices too. That's the green screen. And the laptop just completely disappeared. Hold on.
Food guys, can you guys see all this craziness that's going on? I don't know if you can. Like, I don't know if it's like live updating all the nonsense that I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm back. And, um, God, what a mess. Uh, there we go. P30. There we go. Save. Hello, and here. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, I don't get to all the things I wanted to get to today. This is terrible. <laughs> when can I come back? All right. So maybe I should just do the, let me finish. Let me do this. Let me do this. It's 545. I think I can manage to stay here until 6. And let's see what I can get done here in 15 minutes. Uh, oh, and I didn't, uh, hold on. I have to do one more thing. Keyboard shortcut for this to work. Two. Keyboard shortcut for this to work. One. Save. Okay. Two. And all right, so this is the third video about transformations. This is the one that I was saying maybe you should skip. But I just wanted to talk about a couple things in this video, which are background about how these things work. They're not really necessary for using them, but I, you know, I don't know. Somebody said, somebody told me they were interested in this at one point. So push and pop. So one thing you might ask yourself is, what happens when I call push multiple times and pop multiple times? Well. Um, and this is actually something you often want to do if you want to have all these sort of nested systems. And, and, and it relates to why these are called push and pop. Oh, and something else about push and pop. <laughs> Start this video over. Uh, all right. Um, there's no audio on the whiteboard scene. Is that still the issue? Or that was an old message? Is the audio working now on the whiteboard scene? I think you probably told me that wasn't before, but now it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's fine now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make one more video here about uh, transformations um, just to like cover a few bases that I didn't get to. And some of this is unnecessary information. You could probably skip this one. But um, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into this, there's, there's, there's a few things about this. The first thing that I want to say that's actually quite crucial about push and pop is that push and pop doesn't just save and restore transformation information. And this is um, actually not true if you're using processing, the Java-based platform that I use in some of my videos. This is only true if you're using P5.js because it's the way that the HTML5 canvas works. Ugh. I'm using all these terms that I, that I don't want to use, but I'm using them. So uh, it, it actually saves and restores lots of style information as well, which can be useful to you. So for example, if I go back to this code, and at the, at the, uh, at the end here, if I just want to draw another ellipse, like the, another ellipse is going to be at 300, is going to be at 300, 300, 60, 60. And I hit refresh. Now look at this. This ellipse is not gray with a white stroke, with a white outline. It should be because I said stroke 255, fill 100, drew the rectangle, but actually push and pop also save and re restore stroke weight, stroke, fill, all sorts of styling things. Now, if I could try to give you a list of every single function that's uh, every single setting that's saved and restored by push and pop, and I wouldn't know, I wouldn't be able to begin. But, but in addition to the transformation stuff, you can also use this for styling information, which I generally don't, but you might find this useful in another context. So that's, a, that's number one. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is that you could imagine a more complex scene where, you know, this thing is rotating around this thing, and this other thing is rotating around this thing, but this other thing is rotating around this thing, but not this thing. And you start needing to say, push, draw some stuff, push, draw some stuff, push, draw some stuff, pop, draw some stuff, pop, pop, or something like that, right? So one thing you should realize is you can only have as many pops as you have push. You can only restore the amount of things you've saved. But there, the question arises, which is, when I save a bunch of times and I restore, which thing that I save do I restore? And a way that you can determine the answer to this question is, is 
the way that I'm saving the sequence in something called a stack or a queue or perhaps some other algorithm. So there's something called a stack and there's something called a queue. I don't know if I spelled that wrong. A queue. What are these things? So push and pop are terms that apply to saving and restoring information in a stack. It's called a stack because you can think of it like a stack of paper. So if this is like a bin, your inbox, so to speak, and I put paper A in there, then paper B, then paper C, then paper D, they're stacking up A, B, C, D. So push is pushing the things onto the stack, adding to the top of the stack. When I say pop, I take the last thing out. So first one in, last one out. No, last one in, first one out. That's what it is. The stack, the last thing I put at the top of the pile of paper is the first one I'm going to take off. This is different than a queue, which you could think of like, you know, some kind of like ticket window, <laughs> right? Where people line up in a queue. The first person in line for the queue is the first person to get a ticket. So these are data structures that are, that are uh, common to a lot of programs and a lot of scenarios that if you watch all of my videos might come up in lots of other places. You don't really need to worry about this too much in the case of transformations, but it is important to realize that push and pop are terms that relate to the data structure, a stack. They refer to pushing things onto the stack popping things off of the stack, and if you push multiple times, save multiple times, you're restoring in reverse order. So I, I, I probably should cook up some kind of example that needs that. I can't think of one right now, so I'll come back and do that another time. But that's one thing I want to say. Now the other thing I want to say about transformations, if I come back, is, oh, let me go to the P5.js reference, and let me search transformation, transform, you're going to see, so first of all, you're going to see there's a couple other things. Oh, in addition to just, ah, shoot, I got to do that again because I didn't switch the camera. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Let me come back. There's one more thing I want to show. Um, I'm going to, uh, with the P5 reference here, I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to look at all these functions. So there's a couple things that are, there's some things that are important here. Number one is, oh, my goodness, in addition to rotate, there's rotate X and rotate y and rotate z. Now, those functions rotate x, y, and z. I actually have no idea what shear x and shear y do. Maybe we should look at, look at the reference to read that. Those functions are for the WebGL renderer. The WebGL renderer is a 3D renderer for P5. You know, at the recording of this video, it's still in the very early stages. There was a lot of work that was done over this past summer through a program called Google Summer of Code. So it's, the WebGL library is in much better shape and hopefully will continue to improve. It's a way of doing 3D in P5. I should come back and make another video about that and look at transformations in 3D. So, uh, but you know, in case you're wondering, if you're, you know, rotate is the same as rotate Z. The Z axis is the axis that comes out of the screen, and so things rotate around the Z axis. If I come back to this, right, this over here, <laughs> let me zoom in on that. I, I, I'm like desperate to do this like exact demonstration that I want to do. <laughs> You're like my hand right there. Oh, there it is. This is, that, that's the Z axis. This is pathetic. <laughs> that's the Z axis. I'm pointing at you. So that's something rotating around the z-axis. If it was rotating around the y-axis, it would come out of the screen like this. If it was rotating around the x-axis, it would come out of the screen like this, but not actually come out of the screen because it's 2D and I'm off in Never Never Land talking about 3D, but it's really 2D. It's just the illusion. Explore that on your own time or I will come back to it in a future video. But the other thing I wanted to mention here is you'll see like, oh, apply matrix, reset matrix. Why is the word matrix there? What are we talking about? Well, it turns out that the way the orientation, the transformation state, what is a transformation state? Is zero, zero in the top left? Is there any rotation? Is there any scaling? Is stored in a matrix of numbers. And that matrix of numbers might look something like this. One, zero, 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 one, zero. So this is a two by three matrix. Two rows, three columns. And this is describing the sort of default matrix with no rotation, no translation, no scaling. You could imagine if I scale by two, this matrix might turn into two, 
too. If I translate, some of these numbers might change. If I rotate, some of these numbers might change. So I would love to do some kind of tutorial, pretend that I know all about this and do some like tutorial series about cook, you know, programming your own transformation engine 3D rendering thing and like how you calculate all these matrices. But this is what's more important about it is that as you do this, it's, um, it's all stored in a matrix. So some things you can do is you can just actually call the reset matrix function. And reset is like just wipe everything. So push, 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 pop, pop, pop is like save, 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 restore, restore. But if you just want to reset back to the default state, you can just call reset matrix. Apply matrix, I've never actually used this and I don't know uh, how far along if this actually works in P5, but, but in theory, if it does, what it's supposed to do is I could cook up my own set of numbers, put that into some kind of array or something, and then apply that to the matrix. I, this video better go far away, buried deep somewhere in the playlist because this really isn't part of the first few weeks of learning to program. But I'll figure that out later. The point is, so that's really the last piece that I want to explain. What is push and pop and what is, um, why, why do we talk about a matrix when we talk about transformations? Okay, thanks. All right. Oh, it says three by two matrix. Uh, but isn't it two by three? Don't you say the, um, when you talk about matrices in linear algebra, don't you say the number of rows first and the number of columns next? So that's a mistake in the P5 page, right? Um, so, or did I get it wrong? Somebody will tell me. Somebody will help me. All right, so here's the thing. We don't have very much time left. Uh, I would like to do something a bit more exciting and interesting for this 100th live stream. <laughs> Plus I said I would read 100 random numbers, which I will do. Somebody's gonna, who, by the way, when I read the 100 random numbers, somebody's gonna have to keep track of how many numbers I've read and tell me when to stop. Uh, okay, so I said it correctly, that's great. Um, I think I should do the, I think I should probably do the, yeah, I should. This is great. Me, I am so me is um, referencing a canvas rendering context 2D transform. So P5, by the way, the way that it is just wrapping all of these functions that are built into um, that are built into uh, the browser itself. And so I guess it's using this. So we could learn more by looking at this, but I don't, I don't want to do that right now. Okay. Um, all right. Let's try doing a, let's do a, this stream has, been, let's do the clock. I think I should do the clock coding challenge rather than try to make a video tutorial about custom shapes with vertices. And I'll just come back to that next week. I mean, I could do the straw poll thing, but I sort of feel confident that that's, it, it's good to have each week have a coding challenge. Don't you think? And I'm going to do a really simple clock. So let me pull up some, I need to pull up some URLs real quick. Um, um, so let me pull up these URLs. So I want to look at the 12, I want to find the 12 o'clock series John Maida. Interesting. This, oh, actually, this is the page that I want to look for. Yeah. And I think Golan Levin, who teaches at Carnegie Mellon, uh, remade a bunch of these with P5JS. I thought he said that to me, um, but that would be a wonderful project if he didn't for us to do as a community. Um, let me look, okay, let me, Look at this page, new media clocks. And um, clock assignment. Anybody who wants to like follow along with me, see if you could find anything online that says that goal on Levin uh, with the clock. So look at this, this is great. This is kind of like, this is great. This is kind of like what I want to do. Oh, and he's doing it, okay. So, um, this is such a nice, fun assignment. So um, we're going to do this assignment, which is due 
Oh my God, it's due today! <laughs> Perfect, this is great. This is great. So uh, I'm gonna mention this, I'm gonna mention Midas. Um, let me just look at my Twitter messages. Did I imagine that? I recently got his clocks working again and documented them on my course website. So I don't know if that means working again in P5 or just running in, but I would be great to port all these to P5. Golan, are you on Twitter right now? Can I ask him, someone tweet him and ask him whether they actually are ported to P5 or not? Or when he says he got them working, I'm going to direct message him now. Um, nobody tweet, you don't have to tweet, I got get it working uh, by running on an old OS. All right. Okay, so I, I wish I knew the answer to this question because, um, but I will, uh, if maybe he'll get back to me or I will simply, uh, so let's do this clock coding challenge. So I was thinking of doing it with arcs. I want to do something simple. I mean, arc is a kind of nice thing, but maybe I should actually just do the, um, do like a simple template like this. Like this is a nice, what I, what I want to do is I want to make a clock that's really simple like this. Um, I guess this one already exists, so I'm not going to recreate this. Without like a really strong design point of view. I want to show Alka's clocks also, but let me get that. Um, that's a great example. Uh, what is, let me, let me find. Uh, Alka, can you or somebody just post in the patron group Slack channel the link to uh, the Alka's collection again, because otherwise I have to scroll back and find it in Slack, which is a little hard for me to do on live. Alka code, and I'm gonna look uh, and see maybe if, because um, these are some really nice examples from Alka collections. I'm gonna be able to find it. Collections, uh, clocks, there we go. Okay, so I'm also gonna reference this. These are wonderful. So something like this would be a great thing for me to do like just this like floating Bart clock. Uh, so sorry, um, all right, so let me look at the chat, everything, I think I have all my links up. What's the chance that Golan messaged me back? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, John Mida, all right. Okay. All right, so here we go. I am going to check my phone, which is always the greatest thing to do while I'm Live streaming. Make sure there's no emergencies. That because I'm I'm way behind as always. Um, oh, the camera went off. That's good timing. And this is going to be the last thing that I'm going to do, um, which is the clock coding challenge. I think I'm going to do it with arcs because arcs is kind of interesting, and then I can explore arcs also in this video. Um, if I switch to the whiteboard, you don't hear the music, right? Yeah, I need to erase the whiteboard. I could fix that, but. Because um, I'm gonna need the whiteboard, so okay. I can hear the music, but you can't. <laughs> of course, the camera went off. For the 100th live stream, maybe it would be nice to create a page with 100 clocks or something like that. <laughs> this is me trying to make this into something more special besides the usual like everything keeps crashing and not working and I'm way behind and I get tired and hungry and wiped out and all sorts of stuff like that. Okay. Um. It's the only reason why you're hearing it lower over here is because it's coming in through the, my mic, because I can hear it through a monitor. Um, let me just check one more. Okay, no. So I, I'm going to assume, I don't, I'm going to assume that when he got them working to make these GIFs, that he just ran it on an old computer. And it would be interesting to try to port some of these to P5, and we could do that as a project. 
All right. All right, everybody, here we go. Tick tock, tick tock goes the clock. Anyway, this is a coding challenge where I am going to make a very simple, very basic clock in P5.js. Why am I doing this? Well, if you are beginning to learn about programming and learn about graphics and animation, a great exercise that you can do that can really, you can really express your creativity with is invent a new way of sh uh, showing time. <laughs> make, make a clock in whatever imaginative, crazy way has never been done before, um, and it's really easy to get the time information with P5.js, and then it's just up to you to figure out what to draw based on that time information. Now, the inspiration for this idea comes from, that was a very loud squeak, um, John Maida's 12 O'Clocks. So John Maida, this is a project from 1996 to 97, uh, made in classic Mac, uh, uh, for classic Mac, you can see here are uh, examples of John Maida's uh, 12 clocks. Um, and these were, this, this documentation page was created by Golan Levin, who, as for his course at Carnegie Mellon University, um, oh, that's from last year, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, um, has an assignment which is to uh, create your own clock. And so here's an example clock made in P5.js, a template. And you can see this is what I'm talking about. I would like to do something like this, which just shows you the mechanics of how you get the hour, the minute, the second, and draw something based on those. And uh, a temp template that you could use. And I hope that making this video will inspire a world of so many clocks that I could never possibly imagine. And I can't wait to see all the clocks that people are going to make after watching this video. And I will try to come back and make more. Ah, I want to show you, if you're looking for more inspiration, I got to get to making the clock. Um, this is a collection of clocks made by um, Alka, a loyal viewer of the coding train. And there's some wonderful ones. This is one of my, this is a really nice one, the particle clock. We'll just look at this where we can see, like, look at this, these are particles. So this is actually having particles fly around and end up at, use, uh, with the actual numbers of the time. I'm gonna try to draw something based on time. So, okay, so um, time out. I need an edit point here because I just realized I need to like create the code um, project. So hold on a sec. This is a little edit point in the video. I'm going to say clock. And uh, I'm going to go back to the browser. Clock. And I'm going to take out everything. Except for this. Uh, oh, I'm editing the wrong file, aren't I? Uh, let me do this. Okay, that's good. Checking my Twitter messages. No. Uh, um, oh, hold on. Let me just ask when asking, asking because I was going to give porting all the clocks as a challenge to viewers. Um, okay. So um, some loyal viewer. Did I say some loyal viewer? Did. Did I like describe Alka in a weird, awkward way that I should redo that video? Hopefully it's okay. okay. All right. I now have some empty code and I'm ready to start programming the clock. So there's two things I want to talk about before I start writing some code. Number one is how do I get the time information? So this is actually one of the things that P5 does for you. I mean, it's just wrapping native JavaScript uh, functions that are part of the browser for getting the current time based on your computer's clock. Um, and uh, if I go to the P5 reference, we can see those under time and date. So I can get the day the hour, the minute, the month, the second, and the year. I'm just gonna use hour, minute, I'm just gonna use, and second. 
<laughs> it was with three. Hour, minute, and second. Millies is a different, um, is something different. Millies, <laughs> I just looked at my Twitter in the middle of making a coding challenge. Go away, phone. Millies is a function that gives you the number of milliseconds that have passed since the sketch started. And this could be used for timers and keeping track of things and syncing an animation to a clock. And it's interesting and useful, but I'm gonna actually just pull, and I'm not gonna do like, you know, fractionals of a second. I'm just gonna pull uh, hour, minute, and second from, uh, from P5. So let's actually really quickly just like spin up a digital clock. So I'm gonna say uh, let hour equal hours, let minute equal minutes, I think this is right. Let second equal seconds. Were those the name of the functions? Hour, minute, second. Boy, this is, so this is a terrible idea that I just did. Hour, minute, second. I'm gonna call this HR for owl, MN for minute, and SC for second. I really should come up with better variable names than that. That's what I'm gonna do right now. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna say fill 255, no stroke, and then I'm gonna say text uh, hour plus colon plus minute plus colon plus second, and I'm gonna put that at 10 comma 200. So let's see if this works. We have a really quickly, there we go. We have our clock, right? It is now 6.08 and 28, 29, 30 seconds. Is that the right time? Oh my God, I'm late. I'm so late, it's 6.08. That's fine, I'm gonna keep going with this coding challenge and I'll, I'll leave when I'm done. Um, this is good actually to do it when I'm supposed to be somewhere that I have the coding challenge that's telling me the time. So there's no zero there, so I need to think about number formatting and I, you know, there's all sorts of interesting things I could do for designing, making a digital clock. I'm leaving all the creative ideas to you. But what I want to do is visualize the time. So I think my idea to do something rather simple, but is a little bit more interesting than just bars, is I'm going to use arcs. So this is what the ellipse function does in P5. The ellipse function draws an ellipse or a circle at a given x, y according to some width and according to some height. And the width and height can be the same because you can think of that just as a diameter if it's a perfect circle. So I'm actually just going to have an ellipse and an x, y with a particular diameter. Okay? What the arc function does is exactly the same thing. It draws an ellipse at a given x, y with a given diameter. However, in addition to the x, y, the diameter, width and height, I can give a start angle and an end angle, meaning I can say draw this arc from zero to 180 degrees. So I only see this part of the, of the circle. So let's see how that works. Come back over here and uh, come back over here <laughs> and ah, this is not the code. Ah! Okay, hold on, let me, let me try that again. <laughs> Come back over here and let's try to draw just to see this in action. I'm gonna get rid of the text. Now I don't need that anymore. I can use that for debugging. I'm gonna draw an ellipse at 200, 200. I'm gonna say stroke weight four, no fill. And I'm going to give it a, a diameter of, let's just say 200 right now. Let's, yeah, no, let's say 300. Uh, and let's take a look at that. Oh, and I need to say uh, stroke 255. So there's my ellipse, right? That's the full ellipse. Now what I want to do is I want to draw an arc. So I'm going to say stroke, and I'm going to give it some uh, arbitrary color, and I'm going to say arc, and I'm going to give it exactly these same values, and I'm going to say zero, to 360, zero to 360, which means draw the whole thing, the full circle from zero all the way to 360 degrees. The problem is I want to think of degrees here. I've talked in other videos about degrees versus radians, a different unit of measurements. It's an interesting topic, but it's easier for me right now, I think, to just say angle mode degrees so that the unit of measurement that I'm using in the arc function is degrees. And if I run this, we see this, whoops, this circle, uh, uh, what just happened there? 
the circle, I don't want to be there. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We see the circle turn pink, but it didn't actually turn pink, right? If I make the stroke weight of this eight, whoops. Oh, and the stroke weight of this one, four, we can see the pink arc inside of the white one. And I could say with the arc, like, let me only have 180 degrees, half of that. And you can see that it's drawing that inside the, uh, um, that it's drawing that inside only 180 degrees. And what I could do is I could say, uh, let end equals map the mouse x location, which goes between zero and width, between zero and 360 degrees. And I could say end here. So you can see as I move the mouse, and this is a little, I'm going to, I want to do this the, um, in, in kind of like the other way around actually. I don't, this is a little bit weird. <laughs> this makes no sense what I'm doing. I'm going to get rid of <laughs> that one, right? You can see this is me drawing that full arc. So going from zero all the way to 360 degrees. And by the way, there are varying ways I can fill in the arc. Like I'm, at this point, I probably just want to say no fill. And it's just going to do this. But if I wanted to keep that fill there, I can actually add a final argument. I can say uh, pi, which is exactly this. I'm filling like it's a pie chart. I can say open, which actually, oh wait. Oh, oops, I'm in the wrong function. Sorry, everybody. Matt, you're going to have to edit this. Uh, <laughs> I can say pi, which is like filling it like a pi chart, right? You can see that. I can say open, which is filling it like this, not as a pi, but straight across without connecting the stroke. Or I can actually say chord, which is filling it like open, but by connecting the stroke. So that's a small detail, but it's interesting to see how that works with arc, kind of useful. Uh, I don't care about any of that because I want to say no fill. So what I want to do now is instead of, um, instead of just mapping this arc's location to the mouse, I want to say uh, map the number of seconds, which goes between 0 and 60, to between 0 and 360. And look at that. There's my clock with the number of seconds. Now I want to... Uh, let me do the same thing again. Uh, and one and two, and I could be more thoughtful about this. Let me map the number of minutes that also goes between zero and 360, but I'm gonna have it be, um, you know, 280. So a little smaller, and N2. So there's the number of minutes, right? And as soon as Seconds gets all the way to 60. This should go one more. Come on, get to 60. Here we go. There we go. And minutes went up by one. And now I'm going to do the very last one. And three between, uh, for hour, an hour goes from zero to 24. And I could give some different colors here to also, you know, again, I'm not being very thoughtful about the design. Um, that's what I'm hoping you who are watching this video are much more creative than me. Um, but I can now see, and I actually want this one to be instead of 280, let's say 260. And now we can see I have uh, the number of seconds, the number of minutes, and then the hour. But this isn't right, right? Because what if, what if I want these to actually point to um, where the, the, you know, what's right, what's wrong. The point is to make a kind of creative clock that you wouldn't normally imagine seeing. But um, what, I, what, I, what I would like to do here, however, is actually have these position in the correct place in the sense of like if it were three o'clock, the arc would go from the top all the way to there. So let's think about the time. The time that I'm recording this right now is approximately 6.15 p.m. So the hours should go all the way to the bottom. Uh, and so the hours 
Uh, six o'clock. Oh no, but it's 24 hour clock. Oh, it's a 24 hour clock. Let me just do the minutes and the seconds and I'll think about it. No, I can do it. I can do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So one thing I could do is say actually the hours don't go between 0 and 24. They go between 0 and 12 and I just say modulus uh, 12. So it'll restart once it gets to 12 and 13 will become 1 o'clock again. So that we can see now this is being the hours but it's off. What I really want to do is have that range not go from 0 to 360, but I want to start at negative 90 degrees. Right? So this is confusing because rotation happens counterclockwise. So if this is 0 degrees, I want to start up here at negative 90. Or I could also think of that as uh, 270, right? And I want to go from that all the way to um, itself. <laughs> How am I going to do this? <laughs> this is an interesting problem because because uh, I want it to go, mm, this, this will work, right? Actually, time out. Somebody help me with this. Oh, I, me, I am so me is just saying rotate. That's a very interesting suggestion. Should be 0 to 59. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Hmm. What? Well, so me, I am so me in the chat just said, well, why don't instead of, I could just rotate everything? Something interesting actually about in P5 is zero degrees when you when you put the end at zero, it actually will draw you the entire thing, and it's sort of debatable whether that's a good or bad idea. But mostly it confuses people if it doesn't do that, so that's why it does that in P5. But let's come back here. So there's a couple things I could do. Number one is I could just um, translate to the center. So I could use, and I have a whole video now about transformations that you could watch. So I could just translate to 200, 200, and I could draw all these at 0, 0. So this I think will be a nicer, easier way to deal with this. And I can then just say uh, rotate, I think, negative 90. So there we go. So now we can see I'm coming up on finishing 60 seconds, and here we go. And it starts over again. Now, but I, and, and you can see, so now it is si five, that's not six. The green should be at six. Oh, you know why? So somebody else, uh, Maxwell in the chat is telling me zero to 59. So this is a problem I did, which the mapping should actually be, right, from zero to 59 minutes, seconds, zero to 59 minutes, and then zero to, um, Right, because we don't get 12. We get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12 again. So 0 to 11. And this shouldn't say, oh, I also messed this up. This shouldn't say, uh, right, so let me, oh, no, 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 12 was right there. There we go. Did I, did I get it right with the minutes? Should be, it should be 0 to 59. 12 is fine with the modulus because it's going back to, right, let's see. Dun, zero, one. Oh, no. Oh, one to 12, not zero to 11. Time out. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Shoot. Matt, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So th this is kind of hard to think about, but it actually should be 0 to 60 because 59 seconds does not end at the top. It ends a little bit before. That's why this should be 0 to 12 and modulus 12. So I did this a few different ways, but it's interesting to think about it, but these are subtle little points, but these should actually be 60. And now we've got the clock. So, I mean, again, I'm not suggesting this is a beautiful or interesting or wonderful clock in any way whatsoever. What I'm doing is showing you that you can get the time information and you can map it to some kind of design system. This is a tried and true kind of interesting uh, exercise. You, you can actually do this without knowing a lot about programming. If you know just how to draw shapes and how to manipulate numbers, that's really all you need for this, the second, the hour, and the minute function. So I hope that everybody will uh, try 
to make their own clock. I'll try to think of an interesting way for to compile all these. I don't know how to do that. Maybe I'll make a, like a code pen thing, a template. I don't know. So uh, share them with me in the comments um, on GitHub uh, and um, time out. I'm going to... So actually 0 0.01 to 360 would be best. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at this. Should have the whole circle reduce after a minute is up, then alternate. Yeah, definitely. People are giving me add ticks to prove your hypothesis. If they align with the expected result, fine. I'm just reading the chat now to see if I should do anything else. Yeah, it does do something a little bit weird. I probably should have just made, I probably should have just made like the minute hands and stuff. So let me do that. So you know, this, this coding challenge was about to end and I actually just wrapped up, but I'm going to keep going actually because there's a lively discussion in the chat. Let's just sort of, I, I don't know, I, what I probably should have done is just make a literal clock with minute, second, and uh, hour hands. Let's do that for a second. Let's actually put those lines there and see if this kind of maps with what we think it should be. So I am going to, in addition to drawing these arcs, I'm going to draw a line. I'm just going to do the uh, second hand for a second from 0, 0 to uh, 100, comma 0. And I'm going to give it a stroke of 255. So I'm drawing this line straight up. Now I want that line to rotate according to that end angle. And I'm going to need to put push and pop around it because that rotation should only affect that line, not the arcs. So now we can see that is the actual second hand. And while I'm letting that run for a little bit, I'm going to, and I'm just going to put these at the end. I should put this like, I should, this should be called, I'm really second angle. Oh shoot, I just lost my copy paste. So I'm going to do this here. So this should be called, um, this should be called second angle if I'm being wordier about this. This should be called minute angle. And this should be called hour angle. If I want to be a bit more thoughtful. Second angle, um, minute angle. And now what I'm going to do is make these lines. And I'm going to do a second angle. And I'm going to do a minute angle and hour angle. And I'll make the minute 75 and the hour 50. And here we go. So again, I could be, this is right now, right? It is now, well, okay, I need these to be different colors because that, that doesn't look right. Um, all right, see, minute angle, <laughs> the number of minutes. Let's make this, uh, let's use the same colors. I don't know why I put it down there now, and this is silly of me to separate these things. That's the minute angle. This is the hour. Oh, whoops. This is the hour color, and this is the second color. I should draw a point in the middle. That would be helpful. Uh, and then let's also at the end just say stroke 255, point zero, zero. So there should be a nice little dot in the middle. There we go. So, yeah, this is. The minute looks wrong. We did something wrong with the minute. Six is right for the hour. This seems reasonable for the seconds. Um, and then I must have messed something up about the minute. Minute from zero to, minute equals minute. Let minute equal minute zero to 60, zero to 360. Let's look at, uh, 26. So why is the purple minute pointing up? So let's look at um, console.log minute angle. 
It's always 360. So console.log minute 26. Zero. What did I miss here? Oh, I forgot. Ah, look at this. Horrible typo. I'm staring at it. I should never do coding challenges after hours and hours of live streaming. This I'm like at like three and a half hours of live streaming. <laughs> I just lost the word math there by accident. There we go. Oh, this was terrible. This is our clock. Oh, it makes me happy. That is actually kind of a nice looking clock. And I don't know why I got distracted by this arc thing. If I were to just comment out the arcs just for a second here. This is the basic idea. Oops. This is the basic idea of making a clock. So I have now made a clock in P5 in JavaScript. But the point of me showing you the arc, and again, it was not very creative, it was not very exciting, that you can now take this basic idea of the code or, and reading um, seconds, minutes, and hours from the P5 functions and drawing to your heart's content the most creative, strange way. Look at the John Maida clocks. Look at, um, there's an, uh, the lecture by Golan Levin that I will include as a link in this video's description. Um, and look at the, uh, some of the clock examples from Alka and other users that I'll also link uh, from CodePen. And hold on. <laughs> so I want to check, I don't know if, one thing that I think could be an interesting project is porting all of John Maida's original uh, clocks from the 12 o'clock series, if this is an allowed thing to do, uh, to uh, P5.js to like, allow those projects to live on uh, and uh, for people to see them in the browser. They're beautiful and interesting experiments. So um, thanks for everyone for tuning into this coding challenge. I can't wait to see all the clocks that people make. Uh, I will create a GitHub page where you can submit them and there'll be a link to that um, in the um, video's description, but you can also uh, tweet me at Schiffman with your clocks or uh, just write them in the comments and I'll see them that way. Thanks for watching. <sighs> How did I do today, everybody, for my 100th live stream? I can't even hear that. I think I unplugged something. All right, so, um, I've got to go, but I said I was going to read 100 random numbers for today's 100th live stream. So why is my uh, um, oh, music not working? Oh, it is working. All right, everybody. You should all leave now. Nobody wants, nobody wants to listen to this. But for the 100th live stream, I am going to read Oh, I'll read page 100. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna just check the Slack chat. Thank you for all the... Uh, I'm reading the chat, comma operator. I shouldn't read the chat. I'm, I'm looking for page 100 from the Coding Train Storybook. <laughs> this is a very heavy book. You know I broke this wrist too, by the way, so the left isn't exactly, I didn't have to have surgery on it, thankfully. It's mostly healed, but, ah. So actually, I can, I know this, this, <laughs> there's a very easy way for me to figure out what's 100 random numbers. So each row here is one, two, three, four, oh no, this is the row number, that's not the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Each page is 100 numbers. Yeah. So each page is 100 numbers. I'm going to give myself 100 seconds. Oh, no, there's no way I could read a number a second. Yeah, maybe I could. I could read a number a second. I'm going to give myself 100 seconds. I should program my own timer. 100 seconds is 1 minute 40 seconds. I'm going to give myself 1 minute and 40 seconds. The lullaby song is 1 minute. That's no good. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to give myself 100 seconds to read 100 numbers from, I know I already programmed my own timer, from page 100 of a million random digits. Those of you who stayed all the way through this, what is now probably, I started this at, uh, it was more like four o'clock, so this has only been two and a half hours. Um, here we go. Make this full screen. 
right? I'm not crazy. One minute is 60 seconds. 40, 60 plus 40 is 100. So, uh, here we go. And here we go. 93,108, 77,033, 68,325, 10,160, 38,667, 62,441, 87,023. Wait, wait, hold on. I have to restart, reset this. Do I have to say, do I have to say the, um, do I have to say the, um, like the, should I just read it as 93,108? Do I have to say 93,108? I think if I have to say the thousand, there's no way. I could say 93,108,77033. I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do, right? Right, that's fine. That was 1.5, okay, here we go. Can I loop? Wait, how do I loop my sound effect? There's gotta be a way to loop it. Loop, loop, ah, uh, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about that. The lullaby will stop in the middle. The lullaby doesn't really work for this. It needs to be something much more like, um, I don't know. Nine three one zero eight seven seven zero three three six eight three two five one zero one six zero six eight three eight six six seven six two four four one eight seven zero zero two three nine four three seven two zero six one six four three zero seven zero zero two eight two seven one zero eight five eight nine eight three two seven nine four eight eight three eight eight six zero nine three five seven zero five four one five three eight one four nine five 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 eight zero eight five three two eight zero two three five two one. The thing is, you guys don't even know that I'm messing up. Does anybody have this book? Because I just like totally misread a bunch of the numbers. 100 minutes. I know I don't like rushing. These numbers really need the amount of time that they need. This 100 thing, gone too far. Ninety-three thousand one hundred and eight. Seventy-seven thousand thirty-three. Sixty-eight thousand three hundred twenty-five. Ten thousand one hundred sixty. 38,667, 62,441, 87,023, 94,372, 6,164, 30,700, 28,271, 8,589, 83,279, 48,838, 60,935, 70,541, 53,814, 95,588, 5,832, 80,235, 21,841, 35,545, 11,148, 34,775, 17,308, 88,000, <laughs> I lost my place, but it was 88,000, oh, 34. 97,765, 35,959, 52,843, 44,895. I really should go home for dinner. 22,025. That was 30 numbers, by the way, so far. So I'm, I'm getting there. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second. 10. Wait a second. No, 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 no. I lost my mind. I totally lost my mind. I'm the worst at math. I'm the worst at anybody in the entire world. I only have to read to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't have to read the whole page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was like almost halfway done. The whole page is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is fifty. Fifty rows of ten. Five hundred. Five hundred per page. I'm so close to being done. I forgot where I was. Anybody know the last number I read? Can somebody help me with the last number I read? <laughs> yeah, by the way, I'm definitely going to make an audio book of this and sell it and become very rich and I'll just write a text-to-speech program that does it. 34-something? Um, 34-something? I, I would like to know what the last number I read is. Do I need, maybe I need to start over. Do I need to start over because it needs to be like continuous? Nobody will tell me the last number. So 80 something 34. 
80 something. Nobody can scroll back in time and tell me. Can't you do that? 88 something. Doesn't this fancy internet live streaming thing to like allow people to go back in time? 88,034. I'm getting 22,025. I'm getting a bunch of different numbers. I think 88,034, by the way, I have terrible vision. So it's like very hard for me to, to read. 88,000. There is no 88,034 that I can find. I think I, be, I think I just better start over. I better start over. It's not that much to read. <laughs> oh, people are saying 22,025. Okay, I'm getting that from some reliable sources. Problem is, did I read the correct number? 22,000. There's a 20,604. 22. Does anybody have a copy of this book? <laughs> Ah, 20,025. I found it. Okay. So I read 22,025. Yes? 79,554. 19,698. 25,255. 50,283. 94,037. 57,463. 92,925. 12,042. 91,414. I lost my place. Oh, 9,210, 20,779, 2,994, 2,258, 86,978, 85,092, 54,052, 18,354, 20,914, 28,460. Halfway done. Children, <laughs> you're not children, but I just, I like this as a bedtime story. <laughs> 90,000, I gotta bring this home, because it'll be, you know. 90,552, 71,129, 3,621, 20,517, 16,908, 6,668, 29,916. 51,537, 92,658, 29,525, 1,130, 6,995, 20,258, 10,351, 99,248, 51,660, 38,861, 49,668, 74,742, 47,181, 22,604, 56,719, 21,784, 68,788, 38,358, 59,827, 19,000, I lost my place again because I looked at the chat, 19,270, 99,287, 81,193, 43,366, 6,690, 1,800, 34,272, 65,497, <laughs> 94,891, 14,537, 91,358, 21,587, 95,765, 72,605, 59,809, 69,982, 71,809, 64,984, 48,709, 43,991, 24,987, 69,246, 86,400. Twenty nine thousand five hundred and fifty nine. Thank you all for tuning in to this week's The Coding Train and all of the stuff that I messed up and couldn't possibly do. Checking my Twitter messages one more time. I don't have a message. Um, so, um, 
I, uh, anybody who wants to, um, uh, I don't know if Mathieu, if you want to edit that <laughs> to a standalone video. <laughs> anybody wants to remix that in some interesting way, that would make me so happy. Put the music, nice little music video, lullaby, going to sleep. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I hope some of the stuff that I did today was useful and helpful and it wasn't too much of a mess and I didn't mess up too many times and that you're all not staying up too far past your bedtime. I am very late to get home. It is now 6.40 and I am going to leave now. So thank you, this was the live stream 100. Uh, Phoenix in the chat is asking, when is the next live stream? Uh, so I'm trying to consistently live stream every Friday afternoon. So and, and check Friday morning by, and when, I, when I give the times, I'm giving you Eastern, uh, Eastern time, New York City time. Um, so usually by 12 o'clock that day, I'll schedule the exact time. Typically I would start some, at the earliest I would start would probably be two o'clock. The latest I would start would be four or five o'clock. Um, and then every once in a while on a Friday, I might even do it earlier in the day for, because I know there's a lot of international folks where this live stream is in the middle of the night for them. But so I, I try to find a two hour pocket of time every Friday that I'm available. I should really just do it same time every week. I'm really like over apologizing for this because I'm so <laughs> neurotic about not having an exact time. So um, um, yeah, so next Friday. I don't think I have, there's a couple Fridays in, in, that I'll miss. I will get back to the machine learning stuff. Um, and I wanted to do, I wanted to do something on quad trees. It was kind of like in my mind is like that's kind of important. I didn't do the custom shapes. So I don't know. So I'll come back next week um, and that'll be that. Everybody's giving me all these like improvement. You can increase minutes counter by 1 60th each second and mod by 60. Same for hour. Yeah, so all these wonderful suggestions for improvements to the clock are excellent suggestions. I hope that you will all <laughs> write these in the comments and make your own versions of the clocks and share those so that everybody can learn from everybody else. My clock will live on as it uh, just sort of is. Um, all right. Uh, whoa, somebody from, what time is it in Australia? Um, all right, people are tweeting at me. I'm looking at my phone. I got to go. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I don't know. So this, the archive of this full live stream will be available at some point. I might have to, we'll see whether it needs to be re-stitched and put back together or whether it can sort of live uh, just the, the video. But, um, uh, and I will post the source code for the clock. I'll try to do it tonight or tomorrow. Just tweet at me at Shiftman or if anybody like kind of followed along and wants to pull request it to the code. So this would be so helpful for me. Um, I mean, it's easier for me to do it because I've got the code on the computer, but if anybody wants to really help me out, something that's really, really useful for me is coding train rainbow code. This is the GitHub repository where I keep track of all of the code for all of the coding challenges. And people have suggested ways of improving the way this is organized. Uh, there might be code that's missing. So if you want to help me with this, and the, the simplest thing would just be, um, that was coding challenge, I guess, number 74. So you could pull request cc underscore 74 underscore clock as a folder and, and pull request the code there. I would love that. Um, and I'm trying to use readmes and keep track of all the links to everything and have stuff running online. But if you have any ideas, I would love to totally like redo this as like an exciting coding train website with all the examples running in the browser and code, but I, I, that's never gonna happen unless I get help with that. So that's a community project in addition to making all of your clocks. Um, all right, Quaternions, uh, <laughs> Bessier curves, machine learning, matrix transformations, uh, all these things I don't know.